Hi everybody, in the last video we programmed, excuse me, the race to 20 game. And I said that there were a couple of things that are not so nice. Um, so this code could be cleaned up a little bit. Um, and what I mean by cleaned up is make it easier to read, make the structure a little bit simpler. Um, and then there was the issue of preventing cheating. Right now, if I play the game, the instructions say that you will take turns choosing one or two coins. Um, but there's nothing preventing me from taking more. So I'm player one. Do you want to take one or two coins? I'll take 20, thank you very much. And it says player one wins. So clearly that's, that's not something we want to support. Okay, so let's start by cleaning the code up a little bit. Um, so this all looks fine, this all looks fine. So here's something I'm noticing. Here I'm saying if, this is basically saying are all the coins used up? If all the coins are used up, we say player one wins. And then this is saying if there's still coins left, then do player one's turn. I'm noticing that this could just be an else statement because I'm just saying if the game is over, do this. Otherwise, keep playing. So that was one way to simplify it. Okay, so that's, that's the most immediate thing that occurs to me. Um, we could simplify it even one step further. I don't like having all of these loops and else, or sorry, having the if statements and the else statements inside the loop and like this if statement inside the other else statement. That all seems very convoluted to me. Um, so let's do this. I, you know what I really wish we could do is something like the following. I wish that we could say like, just do player one turn, then just do player two's turn, and then outside of the while loop, then here is where we display the winner. So we don't have, so like we do the test to see who's winning down here. That feels very simple to me because we're repeating player one, player two, player one, player two. Then once it's all over, we display the winner. Um, so let's think about like, how could we do that? Let's bring the code back. So the real problem with displaying the winner at the end of the while loop is you don't know who won because we've had player one go and then we had player two go and we didn't have any way of rating down who won. So uh, one easy thing to do is whenever you need to remember anything in a program, you can just create a variable for that. So I'm gonna say winning player and I'm gonna set winning player to be zero right here because this variable is gonna remember the winner when we see a winner. And right now nobody has won. So up here, so let's let's still have this statement right after player one's turn. We'll say if coins are less than zero, but let's not print player one wins. Let's print, uh, let's say winning player equals one. And now, well, I guess maybe this isn't that much simpler because I, I think we still need the else statement here and we're gonna print player two stuff, and then we'll say if coins, yeah, you know, this doesn't seem that much simpler actually, because then afterwards we'll just say winner is and then winning player. Um, so this is a, like, this makes sense as a way of organizing it, but I don't think we've really achieved the goal of simplifying yet. But let's try this, you know what, like we copied and pasted the code for each player's turn because like the what happens for each player's turn is basically the same. Um, so what would be nice is instead of copying and pasting, let's just over and over again repeat the code that takes a turn and we'll sort of, sort of like switch whose turn it is. So let's go ahead and delete this stuff. So now we've just got, I'm gonna call this do a turn. So we're gonna print out whose turn it, or like, you know, how many coins, we're gonna say, shoot, make your choice. We're gonna subtract the number and then check out who won. And then we're gonna repeat. But each time we repeat, we need it to switch whose turn it is. So like the first time it's player one's turn, then the second time it's player two's turn. So like I said before, whenever you need to remember something in your program, add a variable for that. So I'm gonna call it whose turn. And it starts off being player one's turn. So here at the top, instead of printing player one, I'm gonna print out player and then whose turn. 
And then instead of calling it player one choice, I'm just gonna call it choice. And then if coins is less than zero, then that means whoever just moved is the winner. And so who just moved? The answer is whatever player is inside whose turn, because whose turn is gonna be the number of the player that is currently moving. So I'm gonna take whose turn and save it inside of winning player. And then the very last thing I wanna do is switch the turn. So I'll say if whose turn is one right now, then let's make whose turn be two. Otherwise, it must be player two's turn. So I'll set whose turn to be one. So think that through for just a second. Imagine that it's player one's turn. In that case, this is gonna be true. And so we'll put the number two inside here, which is our way of remembering now it's gonna be player two's turn. And then the if statement is over, and so we skip the else. Now let's pretend it's player two's turn. If it's their turn, this if statement is not gonna be true. And so we skip this, we go to the else statement, and we put a one in there. So when whose turn was player two, we end up replacing the two with a one. So this sort of like flip flops whose turn it is. Um, cool, so now when we repeat back to the top, we go through it again, but now it's the opposite player's turn. And we always test to see who won, and whoever won, we remember that they won. Um, you know what, we maybe even don't really need to remember that they won. Right here we could just display the winner. We could just, we could say if they're out of coins, then display winner is whose turn. And that's, that's the end. And in that case, we don't need winning player anymore. We just need these two variables. So that seems very nice. Let's do one more thing. Let's prevent cheating. So I said that they have to keep repeating. Uh, sorry, I said that they have to choose one or two coins. So let's try and detect cheating by trying to by having them uh, repeat their repeat their guess. Or sorry, repeat, I'm really sleepy. Trying to ask them to repeat their choice um, if they don't choose one and they don't choose two. So we can use a loop for that. I want to, like right before we actually subtract the number of coins, I wanna make them do the choice again if they chose something wrong. So I'm gonna say do this stuff, because this is asking them to make their choice. And I wanna keep forcing them to make their choice while their choice is wrong. So while their choice is not equal to one, and also their choice is not equal to two. Because um, if their choice isn't one and it's not two, then that means it must be something else. Um, so there's this problem. Remember, if I've declared my variable inside the loop, it's not defined for this while condition. So let's go ahead and define it up here. All right, great. So now what's going to happen is it will display how many coins there are left. It will display do you want one or two coins, the user makes their choice. And if the choice isn't one of the two things that are okay, then we go back up to the top and we do it again. Um, and then if it is a one or a two, then we move on. Okay, so I think now this is like a nice complete version of the code. It could be made a little bit nicer. We could have an if statement that, you know, displays a message about stop trying to cheat or whatever. So here, if I try and do 20, it'll just say, do you want, one or two coins. And so it won't move on until I do the right number of coins. But as you can see, it is alternating player one or player two. And we still get the winner right. All right, thanks for watching.